Say the truth, even if it's bitter. So we're not. If, if you're, if you have a friend like that, and you think he's he's kind of, or she's kind of rough, you should love them more, and you should keep those people around you because those people truly care about you. As for the friends who try to tell you, don't listen to your husband, don't listen to your mom. Live, you only live once. Have fun in life. Those friends are destroying you. They're, they're not your friends, even if they smile, even if they're you know, paying your bills, those people are truly your enemies. So in the Sha'ban is which month, which number is Sha'ban? Is it the ninth month, the tenth month, or the eighth month? Put your hand up. Eighth month, isn't that right? It's the eighth month in the Islamic lunar calendar. So like Ramadan is month number nine. Before Ramadan, it's Sha'ban. And Sha'ban is a very special month. One reason why it's special is because it's next door to Ramadan. But on the 15th of Sha'ban, uh, there was a story where the Rasul والسلام, the Aisha anha, she saw him praying, and he told her that Jibreel came to him, and he ordered him to, 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 to pray, to, to pray and to make dua. Now, when we say Jibreel order, ordered him, it doesn't mean it's wajib. Sometimes if we say Amarahu Jibreel, it means Amar Wujub, it's, it's wajib. And sometimes when we say Amarahu, he ordered him, it means Sanna Hada Shaykh, Hathahu. So if we say, if I say the Prophet Wasallam ordered us to eat with our right hand, it doesn't mean if you eat with your left hand it's haram, no. It just means it's Sunnah, it's better. But if I say the Prophet ordered us to pray five times a day, this is wajib, this is farud. This is not sunnah, it's followed, it's a must. So some of the awamir from Jibreel alayhi salam were followed, wajib, must. And some of the awamir, the orders from Jibreel alayhi salam were sunnah, mustahab, mandu. Uh, so, so when Jibreel told him to make dua and to pray more, and there's something in Arabic we say qiyamul layl. A lot of people think that qiyamul layl a salat faqat. They think it's just praying. But no, in, in the religion, Qiyamul Layl yakunu bi salat, yakunu bi dua, yakunu bi qira'a, bi qira'at al Quran, yakunu bi dirasa. Bi tasbih. Bi tasbih. Bi ayy shay khayri. Ba'du nasi ghunun Qiyamul Layl faqat, la, bas, yani a salatu bas. La, hada laysa sahih. Hatta law insan darasa, shay'an mufidan, diniyan makalan. So even if a person did, he studied something Islamic, he, 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 he did something that is called Qiyamul Layl. And actually in the religion, knowledge is more important than the, than the, the, the Sunnah prayer. How come? Because the Rasul alayhi salatu salam, he told Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, la'an tabduwa. فَتَتَعَلَّمَ آيَةً مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ أَنْ تُصَلِّ مِئَةَ رَكْ يعني من النوافل He told Abu Dhar, one of the Sahab al-Kiram Oh Abu, Abu Dhar, if you go and you learn one ayah from the Quran the meaning of one ayah it is better than you it, it is better than praying 100 rak'at 100 rak'at So one of the Muslims, he went to visit Imam Ahmed radiallahu anhu, one of the four Imams of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, radiallahu anhu. And he saw Imam Ahmed all night praying. Then he went another day to Imam Shafi'i, radiallahu anhu, Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i, Imam min Aimat al Muslimin, Aimat al Hula, radiallahu anhu. And he saw Imam Shafi'i laying down, and just he was up, but he was laying down all night. So, so then after he asked himself, these are both popular Imams. How come Imam Ahmed was praying all night? And how come Imam Shafi'i was just laying down? So later on, after a while, he found out that Imam Shafi'i was asked over a hundred questions and he was figuring out the answers through his wide knowledge, through his vast knowledge. And he got the answer of over a hundred questions just by sitting down and contemplating and thinking. This is Imam Shafi'i. And Imam Ahmed, he was not asked questions that night, so he spent his night in Salat, in Qiyam, in, in the physical prayer. And these were great scholars. And once 
Al Imam al Shafi'i radiallahu anhu, Al Imam Malik, he was asked 47 questions. He gave two answers. And they told him, You're Imam Malik. He said, La Ajir. And he said, Go ask Nafisa. Who's Nafisa? She was a good Muslim. And she's known as Nafisa Tul Ilmi. She's buried today, she's buried in Al Qahira. Now, and her grave is not too far from uh, Al Imam Shafi in, in Cairo, in Egypt. And Nafisa to Al Alam, she, she's from the Prophet's family, anha, and she was known for her piety. She was a very good Muslim. And she was rich, and she used to support the ulama. And she also used to study with the ulama. So he, he told her, I don't know, go ask Nafisa the, the question, and inshallah, you will get the answer. And Nafisa is really popular. She, it's mentioned that when she died, um, uh, when she was alive, it's mentioned that when she was alive, a man was sentenced to death. في حياة نفيسة رجل حكم عليه حكم عليه بالإعدام. فقال طلب قال يا حبذا لو تأخذونني عند السيدة نفيسة يعني قبل إعدامي بس أريد أن أراها. فأخذوه عندها. فهو قال لها يا يا سيدة أنا بريء لم أقتل ولم أفعل شيء وهم يظلمونني. فهي قالت اللهم أعني أبصار الظالمين عنك. She, she made dua. A Sayyida Nafisa. She made dua. Uh, this man told a Sayyida Nafisa, I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. And they're accusing me falsely. And they want to kill me tonight. So can you make dua for me, please? And then she made dua for him. She said, Oh Allah, whoever wants to hurt you and unjustly, may Allah make them not see you. And then when the soldiers took took this man to be killed, they took him to his to his end, to his death. The, the guy who was gonna you kill him, he said, Where is the guy? They said, He's right in front of you. He said, No, 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 are you guys playing with me? They, he said, Where is the man that I have to kill? He said, They said, the man is right in front of us. He says, Wallahi, I don't see anybody in between you soldiers. He said, I don't see anybody in between you. Then what happened? The soldiers said, Wallahi, we heard the Sayyidina Nafisa say, Allahumma a'mi, aqsara al-dhalimina anhu. She made dua and she said, Oh Allah, uh, blind the, 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 the sight of anyone who wants to do injustice towards you. So what happened was they said something, they said, let's do some more research. And then they let this guy go free. They found out he was truly innocent and they let him go free. This is from the dua of the Sayyida Nafisa radiallahu anha. When she died in Egypt, they wanted to take her to Al Baqiyah, where the Prophet used to make dua. Lots of the Prophet's family is buried in Al Baqiyah. I was there a few months ago. And they, the, the, uh, her husband, his name was Ishaq, and they came and they gave him lots of gifts. And they told him, please don't take her to Al Medina, let her stay in Egypt. And he said, no, no. She, she, she told me, I, I, I want to be buried near the Rasul, my grandpa, alayhi salatu salam. And then when her husband, this half died, um, slept, he saw the Rasul in his dream, alayhi salatu salam. He said, she's your wife, and she's my granddaughter. Keep her here so that the people of Egypt can benefit from her barakah. Yeah, he said, keep her buried here. Let her be buried in Egypt. So he woke up and he told them, that's okay, nobody has to give me gifts or anything. We will leave Nafisa in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, we will let her be buried here in Cairo. And, and today her, 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 her qabr is uh, not far from Al-Azhar al-Sharif. In, in, it's not far from Al-Azhar al-Sharif, from Masjid al-Husayn in um, in Egypt, in Cairo. So the Prophet alayhi salatu he said, make dua. And qumu layl. And it's the habit in many Muslim countries that the people, they do this. They, they make dua and they speak many good things in the middle of Sha'ban. But you can, you can sit wherever you like. Yeah. So, 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 so what we want to mention today is we will make dua inshallah and there is great barakah in dua but in some dua you have to be careful because the, the, the dua is either said incorrectly 
or some dua, there's even a way to make dua. لِدْعَاءِ آدَابِ يَجِبْ أَنْ نَتَعَلَّمَهَا لِأَنَّ بَعْضَ الْأَدْعِيَةِ أَوْ بَعْضَ أَسَالِيبِ الْأَدْعِيَةِ مُخَالِفَةِ الدِّينِ وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ I'll give you an example. We have to make sure our dua is proper. So if somebody said, Oh Allah, make me uh, have alcohol tonight. This is, you can't make dua like that. You, our person cannot make dua for haram. Dua is only for what? For khayr. You cannot say, Oh Allah, uh, please, because of the Prophet, make uh, uh, the real Madrid team win. This, this, your dua should be beneficial. It's not about soccer. Your dua should be beneficial. Like some people, because of soccer, they go crazy. Uh, because of soccer, especially now, they're going crazy. And they sometimes uh, support these teams that a lot of them, they, they, they do things against Islam when they win. So we have to be careful. If we want to support anybody, let us support Muslim, you know, the Muslim teams, but not the, the non-Muslim teams. Because a lot of them, when they win, they do things that are un-Islamic, and you guys know that. So the dua, a person should make dua, and his dua should be, hal should be halal. Also the dua, you cannot make dua for something that the Qur'an said is not gonna happen. Like, what's an example of that? The, the Qur'an said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَيُّشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ So the Qur'an teaches us that everything can be forgiven, except shirk. Except kufr. So if some, if we know somebody died and he was away from Islam, he was not on the haq, it's not allowed, it's not allowed to say, Allahumma arhamhu wa lahu. It's not allowed. You can go to his parents and you can say, Allah yusabbirukum ala tuqdani You can say that. You can go to the family of a non-Muslim and say, we ask Allah to give you patience. You have lost your son, I'm sorry. But you can't say, may Allah forgive him. Allahumma wasa' qabrahu wa nawa qabrahu wa ja'alhu min ahli jannah huwa in kafara laysa min ahli jannah. Hada laysa minni, hada laysa min jayli, hada min al-Qur'an al-Kareem. So even the dua, you have to be careful because making dua for a non-Muslim after he dies is not permissible. While he's alive, you can say, Allah ya jihdi. Allah yadihi, Allah yarzukuhu. You can say that, that's fine. But after he dies, you cannot say like in some Facebook, uh, uh, like in, uh, on Facebook you will see if someone famous dies, they say rest in peace. For a non-Muslim, we're not allowed to say that. Because the Quran does not, it, it, it says their masir, their destination will be the hellfire. And th this is not something, uh, Extreme. This is what the Quran says. This is what the Quran says. Inna Allah la yaghfiru. Allah does not forgive. May you shi. Inna Allah la yaghfiru. Ay you shaka bihi. Allah does not forgive shirk. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dalika. So if a Muslim, however bad a Muslim was, suppose he drank alcohol or he did drugs or he missed his prayers, yes, we can make dua for him. Allah yaghfir lahu. Allah yarham him. But if somebody died as a non-Muslim, we're not allowed to make dua for him after he died. And there's a story where the Rasul alayhi salatu he was, he was making dua, he was making salat al janaza for a man and Jibreel came and told him, stop, he died as a Catholic, don't make janaza for him. Because the Rasul thought he was Muslim. The Rasul thought that person was Muslim. But Jibreel alayhi salam told him, stop, don't make, don't make dua for him. Do not make dua 